Hey everybody, today I wanted to answer a question that came up from Monday's video where I showed how the UI for this game I've been building for the last couple of weeks is in a totally separate scene. And the question was about how you get the UI to actually bind up to the character once you're in game. This is a multiplayer game and right now it's showing the character bound up with this ladybug to the UI. My actual main character is this one. I can shift click on it and just take control of anything and the UI binds and switch right over. I can take control of this ladybug, have it go over and attack. In fact, I'm thinking about maybe just making this kind of a mechanic of the game. So I paused the game and I want to show you what that UI looks like. Here I've got this in-game UI scene and this has all of my different UI elements. If I go to the scene view and maybe switch over to 2D mode, you see that each one of these canvases is representing a different one of these UI parts. And these are actually controllable. I can turn it on and off. Let's hit play real quick. Go into my level and I can go down and find this in-game UI loader. I can actually unload the UI. You'll see the scene removes itself completely. Load back up and my character is rebound, everything still works, and I can use all of my abilities and so on. So how does it work? Well, it uses the most common method in pretty much all of my projects, which is a simple bind method. And binding, I feel like, is one of those topics that sounds complicated, and sometimes it is complicated because people build these giant complex frameworks to automatically bind things up and do all kinds of crazy interactions, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to really just simplify it down to the core of what binding is, which is really just giving the proper references to something and show you how I use it in a couple simple lightweight scenarios like this. So let's dive into the actual prefab structure and then the code. First off, in this game, just about everything is a character. That includes all of the creeps that walk around, includes the treasure chest that you can go loot over here. So I can click on it and walk over there and go loot it, and the towers. So if I click on any of these, you see that they're all characters, and one of them is assigned as the local character. If I shift click on something, it act, whoops, that did not do the what I wanted. There we go. Shift click, it'll take control by setting that as the local character. And then everything will up Date to whatever the local character is using. And that's how the binding works. So well, I'm talking, but let's look at the code. Here's the method that sets our local character. This gets called whenever I left shift click on a character and then take it over. And this calls in, at first it just does a little bit of logging to say what's going on here. This actually could all go away and I could delete it, but it's there so we can log things. It essentially though is setting a local character reference and then firing off an on local character changed event and passing in our character. Let's take a look at this event. I'll hit F12 and go to it. You see that it's a public static event with the character parameter on our action. So we pass in a character and we can register for this on local character changed. And this event firing off is what's updating the UI so that every element knows where to get its data from and how to interact with its buttons. Let's hit shift F12 and find all references for it so you can see where this is used and kind of how it hooks up. So there are a couple interesting ones. Let's start with something simple though. Now you might not have noticed it when I was running around, but one of the resources the character has is gold. And there's actually a special UI element that shows our gold. This UI gold or UI current character gold, that's the name of it. And inside of its awake method, you'll see that it registers for the on local character changed and calls the bind method, which takes a character. So, and then on line 14, if we have a local character already assigned, which we probably do when this UI element is loaded, then we're going to just call that bind right away. And whenever we change it, the bind method will get called again. So in this bind method, we do a couple of things. So on line 22, we actually assign the character that we've got to the under underscore character field that we have. And on line 19, if we already had a character assigned, so if we've called this multiple times, then we unregister for the gold on value changed. And gold is a network variable. Uh, this is all multiplayer using netcode for game objects. If it changes, then on gold changed gets called, which just updates the gold text. And we can look at that in game. Here you can see the UI element. It's got that text subchild right there that it's updating. It's at 330. If I go back in, unpause, and start grabbing some gold out of this chest, you can see the number just going up and up and up. Now, if I switch over to a different character, let's see. You see that this character's got zero gold, but there is a chest over here, so this one could start grabbing some gold too. You can see it got maybe 180, and I switch back over there, I got my 690. 
That one was pretty simple though, so let's take a look at the ability panel. This one has two-way interactions, deals with hotkeys being pressed, and all kinds of other stuff. You'll see though that the awake is exactly the same. Register for the on local character change, calling our bind, and then call bind automatically. The other thing that we do though is in the start method, I find all of my child buttons and then register for their hotkey pressed, just so that I can call back into this hotkey pressed method and tell our local player to to set our role, which sets our character class and our ability essentially, over to the index of that button. So this is how the button gets fired back and triggers back all the stuff back out to our player. Now, if we continue on to the bind method, you'll see that in the bind method, we do two things. We call the refresh buttons, which is going to set up each one of our individual buttons and bind those. And then I register for the on changed event of my abilities class. This will fire off whenever our abilities change. So this could happen from our character changing to a different character or from the abilities being added from a new item, being lost or added from a buff or anything else that are called refresh buttons. Refresh buttons is going to find all of those child buttons again and we could cache this but it really doesn't matter. It's not something that happens enough for me to care enough to optimize and deal with the extra overhead in my brain. So instead we just grab the buttons and then we loop through them and bind them up to the character at the index. Just say this bind method is slightly different and that's okay. I'm all right with having two parameters on my bind. Once it gets to three, I start to think like, okay, maybe I should change this and pass in something else though. So our bind method here takes the character and the ability index. We save off the character. Remember, this is on the specific buttons. This is on any one of these little buttons right there. We've got the bind getting called. Now let's go back to our code if I can click over and find it. And then you'll see that we refresh the ability on slot, which really just sets the icon and sets the enabled state. And then it, does, it doesn't even set the text. That's right, because I stopped showing text. And we cache our ability definition. And then we update this passive counters binding as well so that we can keep track of the buffs that we have. And you haven't actually seen that, but if I switch over here, let's go switch W and then back over to this... Uh, what is this, a lich mode? It's got a little thing where it gets a little bit more and more powerful every time we switch into it. So it gains stacks, and then we get extra magic power. Kind of uh, one of the many things that gets bound up in our binding system. If I continue on a little bit more, you see the, the last thing I do is just set the active state to false if it, it, we, it's one of the buttons beyond the number of abilities that we have. So you loop through all of the buttons that I've got, which is six, and then you turn off the ones that we don't want to show. And that's really the core of it. That's how the binding works. This is the most complex of them. And again, you can build up complicated advanced systems for binding where you give it an interface and pass in some object and everything automatically hooks up and ties together. And that works great when you want to build out a framework and a system a bunch of people are using. You don't necessarily need that though. And you don't have to go the super complicated route when it comes to data binding. Just pass in the references to the things that you need. Make sure that you've got the references updating whenever the data for it changes. So if I and want to shift click and take over a tower. Oh, can I take over a tower? Maybe that's broken now, but maybe I want to go take this guy over. I, I should be able to do that and have the UI automatically rebind up. It also opens up a lot of possibilities. Like I said, I can now make it so maybe I'll just allow players to take over their own creeps and control them and have a little bit more RTSE control over some of that stuff. I don't know exactly yet, but it's, uh, it's given me lots of ideas. Anyway, if this is interesting and helpful, uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, drop a comment down below if you got some ideas for the game. Love to hear that as well. And if you're interested in just multiplayer game development or the source code for this stuff, I've been posting it to the multiplayer mastery course where it taught people how to build multiplayer games. And that's actually where this kind of all spawned from is just a, one day I decided to turn that into a MOBA and it took a couple hours and here we are. So anyway, welcome to check that out. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that stuff. And again, if you got cool ideas for uh, the gameplay or other stuff or questions about data binding, please drop a comment and let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.